Hi, my name is Joel Wilson with Applied Controls, and today I want to walk you through a demonstration of Mailer Toledo's M800 transmitter that you see here. The first thing I want to talk to you about is what the M in M800 means. It means multi-parameter. So we will do readings of pH, ORP, conductivity, DO, optical DO, dissolved carbon dioxide, turbidity, and temperature. You can have that done with one transmitter. It has up to four channels. It can be a one, two, or four. It can be meant for either your process or for water applications. The M800 has up to eight analog outputs. It has a temperature rating of four to 122 Fahrenheit. The M800 transmitter can do both analog and Metler Toledo's ISM, which is a digital sensor. But first, let's take a look as some of the features and setting this up in the menu here. So now I'm going to walk you through some of the steps of this M800. Uh, first we have our ISM, our favorites, calibration and maintenance, and then settings tabs. This is a touchscreen transmitter so just to get in if we go to ISM. The ISM stands for Intelligent Sensor Management. Um, so we can sit here with these digital sensors or this pH that I have hooked up uh, gives us a lot of information that's helpful. DLI is Dynamic Lifetime Indicator. It's telling me that this sensor has 380 days. TTM is Time to Maintenance. I have 30 days left. Uh, adaptive Calibration Timer sends at 14 days. So this sensor will tell me when I need to calibrate, when I need to clean. It'll also give me information on how many days of life that it has left. Every time you calibrate it, those things will adjust. And with this being a color screen uh, monitor, those will be in green, yellow, or red. So we'll go back. Messages. If you ever had any error messages, that's where they would come up. Uh, you would know that because where it's blue here, it would be flashing in red. And we can see what those messages were. ISM Diagnostics. Again, we have multiple channels. I only have one hooked up, so I can only see one channel. Uh, cycles. If we were in a cleaning place or a steaming place, we could see how many cycles that it's gone through. If uh, you wanted to monitor the sensor again, again, there's the same things that we just looked at, the dynamic lifetime indicator, uh, maintenance timer, and then a calibration timer. But the other thing it shows us is our operation hours. So if you were curious to see how long that thing has been in operation, uh, you can tell right there. Another thing it gives you is your max temperature, the date, and uh, the temperature that it saw. That's awesome to know because if somebody happened to steam out a line and fried your pH sensor, for example, you can come here and see and, and know if that thing was uh, reached a temperature that is outside of its specs. Uh, calibration data. If you want to see, again, uh, we could pick whatever channel we wanted to do. You can see your actual, you see factory, your adjustment, or depending on how many calibrations you've done, you can see up to three of those at any time. So if we wanted to see cal number one, we see Cal data. We can see uh, it was done June the 5th of 2019 and uh, see what our slope and our offset were. Uh, it'll save the last three calibrations on there. The other thing sensor info makes this nice. You have the sensor in the process and you need to replace it. Don't know what that part number is. Don't know uh, uh, when it was ordered. You can come here and we can see the serial number and the part number. You can give me a call and get that thing ordered and replaced. Same thing here with the hardware. There's our transmitter, there's our part number and serial number, and uh, we can get you a new one, a replacement if needed. Logbook, this shows every screen that we just went through. So if you'll notice, hardware, uh, sensor info, calibration, so forth. But it saves that every time somebody goes there, and that's key because if you wanna make sure somebody's out there actually doing their job of calibrating and looking at the sensor, uh, that's where you would know if it's been done. I have seen it before where people have issues gone out there and there's been nothing done to the transmitter, I can open up the log book and make sure that something was done. At any point, if you want to get back to the home screen, we just hit the home. So we're going to come here. Again, this is favorites tab. I don't have anything set up, but if you wanted to set up a, a quick reference of hit the favorites and then we can come here to calibrate, uh, makes things simple and easy there. You can do your calibrations of your sensors right there in the field through the transmitter and that's what we're going to walk through. I've got my seven, I've got my four buffer, I've got my cleaner, and we're gonna walk through that process now. So now let's walk through a calibration. You can do that through the transmitter here, and we use this button here. So we wanna come here to calibrate sensor. 
we're going to choose channel. Again, I'm going to choose channel 1, pH, 1 point. Uh, I want to do a 2 point calibration, so I'm going to change that there. And then under here, I'm going to go through my buffer tab. You can select different buffer tabs. I'm going to come down here and uh, select there, medium or good. Okay, so we're good to go now. Uh, the first thing we want to do is uh, get our buffer solutions. So I've got my 7 here. I've cleaned off my sensor, and I'm going to put my sensor in my 7. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Cal. It tells me to put it in buffer 1. I'm going to hit Next. And she's going to sit there checking for stability. As you see, the H blinking, we're in hold, so we're not getting any erratic readings. It's recognized a 7 buffer, and now we're calibrating to our 7. We are done with the calibration there. We're going to take it out. We're going to put the sensor into our cleaning solution. We're going to go ahead and put it into our second buffer as it's asking us to do, which I want to use my four. We're going to hit next. And we have found our four and it's going to calibrate to our four buffer. It's actually a 4.01 Mettler Toledo buffer. All right, so we are done. Our calibration is finished, it's completed. We can see our slope is 100.7. We can see the offset as 6.98. So we have an adjust to save, we can either adjust or calibrate. If you calibrate, you're gonna calibrate the sensor. We want to adjust the sensor. That way our sensor is adjusted to our slope and our offset. So we'll hit adjust. And so now we, our calibration has saved successfully. And that is how you calibrate a sensor using the transmitter out in the field. Now there is an easier way of doing this. And Metler Toledo has these digital sensors where you can just swap them out, bring the other sensor into the shop, do your calibrations there. We're not having to take everything out into the plant, especially on days when it's 110 outside, it's zero. It's not fun to do. And I will show you that in another video. So next we're going to look at our settings. So we hit our settings. Uh, you can go through a guided setup if you'd like, but uh, if we want to do our measurement, we got a channel set up. So here again, we have four channels that we can set up. I only have one hooked up, so we say channel one. I have it set as auto. What that means is no matter what I hook up to it, uh, as long as I use that same sensor cable, uh, it will automatically read it and start measuring, start making that reading for you. Now, if you wanted to say, hey, I need that only to be PHRP, we can set that at PHRP. And now if somebody hooked up a DO or connectivity to channel one, it's gonna give you an error message and will not make that reading for you. If we wanted to sit here and have this labeled, I have it as channel one, but if you say, hey, this is boiler number one or plant one, whatever, UAN number one, uh, we can sit there and label it however that you want it to do. These are my readings, the M1 through M6. And so I've got it set at pH, I've got Celsius. If you say, I don't wanna see Celsius, I wanna see Fahrenheit, you can do that as well. Um, but uh, you can see your millivolts, you can see your dynamic lifetime indicator if you wanted to make that your calibration timer. There's a lot of different options for what you can see to make it uh, easier for you to do. So uh, display setup, I've got it set up for one channel at a time. If you had, say, a two, a two channel and you wanted to see two channels, you can see both channels at the same time. If you had four channels hooked up and you wanted to see the pH on four of those, you can do that here. Uh, page one, line one, channel one, and then you would sit there and select, I want that to be pH. And you'd go through each channel so you could see those measurements. But we're going to come back here to channel one so we just see our pH. Um, as we go through here, if you have a cleaning system and you want to um, set it up for intervals, you can set it up based on how many ever hours. So every eight hours, I want it to clean for 30 seconds, assigned to whatever channel that you need and so forth. Um, pretty easy to do. And then user management, I always show this because this is password protected, can be if you want it to be. And you can put a password where only a certain amount of people can go in there and make changes and really kind of helps be a safeguard of uh, people messing with the system, different outputs and so forth. So again, we're gonna go back to the home screen 
And that's it. Uh, you know, the, just a little bit of the basics. Again, if I had multiple channels, I could go here and see channel two, channel three, channel four, but I don't have those hooked up. Uh, I have it only one channel, so I have it displaying one channel. But again, if you wanted to see multiple channels at once, you can do that. The M800 transmitter offers a lot of benefits. It will make your application simple and easy. For help with your next application, please contact me at jwilson at ac-acsi.com or give me a call at 405-255-9440. I'd love to help you with your applications. Thank you so much for watching the demonstration today.